Question 1. A student added 3 grams of magnesium to 50 centimetres cubed of hydrochloric acid and measured the temperature change. They repeated the experiment 5 times. Here are their results. And then question A. Calculate the mean temperature increase. So if it's a 2 mark calculation for a mean, it usually means we've got to spot an anomaly and leave that out of our calculations. So on this set of results, we can see that experiment 4 is an anomaly. So we're going to work with the 4 good results that we're left with. So we would do 6 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6 and divide by 4 because we're using 4 of those results. And the answer is 5.5 and we remembered the units degrees C. Question B. Is this an endothermic or exothermic reaction? And explain your answer. Well, in the results table, it tells us it's a temperature increase, so that tells us it's an exothermic reaction, because exothermic reactions give out heat energy to their surroundings and therefore warm up the surroundings. And question C, suggest what this type of reaction could be used for. Well, it's warming up the surroundings, so it could be used for hand warmers or a self-heating can with something like coffee inside. So keeping with the same question from before, part D, what is the dependent variable in this investigation? And part E, suggest two control variables for this investigation. Now the dependent variable is the one that you're interested in, you're observing and writing down in your results table each time you do the experiment. So in this case, it's the temperature change or the temperature increase. The control variables are the ones we keep the same to make it a fair test. So we don't want to say the word amount. So we can't say amount of magnesium or amount of hydrochloric acid because you won't get a mark in the exam for using that word. Instead, we're going to say the volume of hydrochloric acid. So 50 centimeters cubed each time. You could also say the concentration of the hydrochloric acid and also the mass of the magnesium. Don't forget to like the video if you're finding it useful. So question two, draw a reaction profile for an exothermic reaction. First of all, we need to label the axes. So up the side, we've got energy and along the bottom, we have progress of reaction. In other words, as time goes on. And because it's an exothermic reaction, the energy level of the reactants must be above the energy level of the products because they're going to give out energy to the surroundings and therefore the energy level will drop. We then draw on the curve, making sure we go up first of all and then it drops down to the level of the products. Question B, label the activation energy and the overall energy change. So the activation energy is from the level of the reactants up to the top of the curve making sure the arrow starts and finishes at exactly the right point. And the overall energy change is the difference between the energy level of the reactants and the energy level of the products. And make sure you've noticed the direction of the arrow. Question three, look at the following reaction profile. Is it an exothermic reaction or an endothermic reaction? And explain your answer. Well, it's an endothermic reaction in this case because the energy level of the products is higher than the energy level of the reactants. That means that the chemicals have taken in energy from their surroundings and their energy level has increased. Question B, label the overall energy change on the diagram. So once again, it's between the reactants level and the products level and make sure you notice the direction of the arrow. And question C, Draw a line on the reaction profile to show what it would look like with a catalyst. So we need to remember that a catalyst lowers the activation energy. So the line is going to start and finish at the same point, but this time it's not going to rise up as high because the activation energy is lower. So don't forget to click subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching.